Okay, here we go. Um, so we're doing today geometric series. So it's a geom it's growing geometric. It's, it's adders subtracted. We're totaling them up. Things like that. Same thing we did last at the end of last week with the arithmetic ones. Only it's geometric. Um, we will not. I will not be asking you to find the three have the sum of the first three hundred and forty terms because geometrically they grow so fast. There's no way you're not going to get that big. Your exponents aren't going to be that large. It's going to be too bad as far as that goes. Um, so geometric sequence formula, we've already done this one. Okay. Um, your summation notation is essentially that with the sigma in front. So just a different way of writing what a series is. That's all that is. Um, the new formula you get, this is a tricky formula. You'll notice one difference between this geometric formula and all the other geometric formulas. The n. In the other formulas, it's n minus 1. In this one, it's not. It's r to the n power, not n minus 1. Okay, it's a slightly different but important one. All the other ones, n minus 1, n minus 1. Everything else was all n minus 1 except for your summation formula. Okay, so the sum of the first n terms in the geometric sequence. You need to know the first term, you need to know r, you need to know n. This is a complicated formula to set up. You have to be careful when you're typing it into your calculator to get the correct answer. Be careful how you do it in there. Okay, watch your negatives and positives when you're typing things into your calculator. Okay? Questions? Um, so these are all pretty much the same thing we've always done before. Some of the first n terms, first term, number of terms, common ratio, blah, blah, blah. Okay, your first example is actually just a review. Take a minute. Which ones of those are arithmetic? Which ones are geometric? What is your D or your R? We've done this several times. This is review. Look at the summation formula. Figure out if it's arithmetic or geometric from the formula. You should be able to get it from the formula. If not, work up the first three or four numbers and see if you can figure out from that. When they have one more chapter test. What? How many chapters do we have? We have one more chapter test and one more quiz that is in the chapter test category. Oh, cool. so. And then we're just like... And then the final. The final. Yeah. Okay, ladies, gentlemen. Okay, so the first one is arithmetic. D is 2. It's a linear equation. Then it's an arithmetic one. This one's geometric. R is 4. If you have the exponent, okay. Next one is geometric and R is negative 7. This one is geometric and R is 3. This one is arithmetic and D is 1 sixth. And this one is geometric and R is 5. So fairly straightforward. Okay. Now we need to find the sum. Now the first one, yeah. 15 and n and n, you can add them all together. However, we're going to set up the formula to do it correctly. So our sum formula, we need a sub 1, we need r, we need n. We need the first term. We have that. We need to know our r. What do we multiply to get the next term? r in this case is negative 2. We need to know how many terms there are. We need to know n. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. n equals 6. On this one, you just count them. Because it's, you know. in, in theory, it would probably actually be easier to not use the formula on this first one. If this were a test question, and I'm going to on my calculator. It would be easier than using the formula. But we need to practice setting up the formula and using it. So the sum of the first six terms, use the formula, a sub 1, negative 15, times 1 minus r to the nth power, all over 1 minus r. And you have to put the parentheses around the negative. You've got to keep track of that. Okay. Even in your calculator. Even in your calculator, you've got to be very careful how you do this and how you type it in. 
Now, you can do it in parts. I've done that. I've done that. Did it in parts. Take negative 2 to the 6th power. Do 1 minus whatever number I get from that. Multiply that times negative 15. And then divide that. My denominator, I'm going to need to calculate or figure out that that's 3 in the denominator. Take that, divide it by 3. Okay. So often, but not always, these are reducible. Okay. You can simplify, you can reduce as you go along. But you've got to know how to put these in your calculator now to work them. And you get 315. Why is it so relatively small, smaller than the actual last number? Because it changes sign every other term. They're all positive, it adds up to a much larger number. But geometric ones can sometimes be deceptively smaller than you think because every, every other term could be negative on them. You have a negative R. The next one, same thing. I have all the information I need. First term, R, and N is 5. Set up the formula. You have to use the formula. The sum of the first five terms is 12 times 1 minus 3 to the fifth power, all divided by 1 minus 3. Um, you have to be extremely careful if you're typing this in your calculator. Um, what I would probably do is I probably would not do it all in one shot. I really probably would not do this all in one shot on my calculator. What I would probably do is do the stuff in the parentheses. 1 minus 3 to the 5th. And if you do 1 minus 3 to the 5th power... That will give you whatever that number is. Multiply that times 12. Divide that by negative 2. That's what I would, honestly, that's what I would do. You can type it in your calculator at once, but... No, this would be negative 2 in your denominator. So, yeah, realistically, I would not do this. I would probably not do this all at once in my calculator. I'd do it piecemeal. And write down the parts as I'm going along, or at least, you know, work carefully. And you get... 1452, which is not too bad. On this one, same idea. Six term, ace one is two thirds, R is one third. So the sum of the first six terms is two thirds times one minus one third to the sixth power. All over one minus one third. Okay. Now, if you stop and think about this, this is one where a little bit of work ahead of time actually makes it easier to do on your calculator. What is one minus one third? Two thirds. So this and this actually cancel each other out. If you take a second. And look at the problem a little bit first before you start typing in and trying to do it on your calculator. You get one minus one third, that's two thirds, two thirds, and two thirds. They cancel each other out. And you do one minus one third to the sixth power. And your calculator's gonna handle that pretty good. And for that one, your answer is, and yes, I do have these worked out ahead of time. 728 over 729. So, probably the hardest thing about this is putting in your calculator. On your test, I'll be looking for the formula and the final answer. Probably more points for the formula correctly, written down. This is what I want to see. What I'm putting down here is what I want to see on the test. I want to see the formula written out and the answer to go with it. Trust me when I say, write the formula out. Don't try to, oh, 
You know, you got the formula on the board in front of you. Don't go, oh, I can just, well, I know what that is. I'll do this and type it all in your calculator and plan on writing down the correct answer. Write the formula down on your paper first. Don't simplify anything. Just write it down first. And then go from there. So the next one, same idea. N is 10, first term, R. So the sum of the first 10 terms is 5, 6 times 1 minus negative 1 half to the 10th power all over 1 minus negative 1 half. And if you are doing this in your calculator and typing it in, be very careful with your parentheses. Remember, for every one you have going one direction, you have to have a matching one going the other direction. Often, errors, when it says syntax error, that's usually where the mistake comes from. And that's usually where it comes from, is not having the parentheses in there correctly. Okay. And then you have to remember, too, where is the power going? It's directly to the fraction, not to the 1 minus 1 half. You do 1 minus 1 half to the 10th power. So type it in very carefully when you do that. Okay. This is one of the few lessons where I actually have all the problems worked out ahead of time. And you end up getting some ugly fraction. 1705 over... 3,072. Not pretty. Not by any stretch. Questions so far? Yeah, this one's a nasty one, doing it in your calc, typing it up. But use the fraction keys, go carefully. Is there any other way besides this? That's what you put. It's not working. I need to get a fraction. I know what you did. You did subtraction instead of negative. Yep. How do I put negative? No, if you subtraction. This is the negative. Yeah. That's all. Oh. So let's do more examples. The bottom two in particular are going to be extremely important. The first two are still the same thing, but so same idea. Find the sum of the terms. We know what n is. We know what the first term is. Got to figure out r. How do you find R? Take a number, 4.5, divided by the previous one. And I do believe that's 1.5. Yeah. Well, actually, I have the answer down here. Yes, it is 1.5. Like I said, this is one of the few that I actually work out ahead of time. Make sure I have everything written down nice and clear and all the answers already worked out. I don't do that on a lot of them. I do it on this one. So plug this stuff in. Some of the first seven terms, 3 times 1 minus 1 1.5 to the 7th power, all over 1 minus 1 1.5. And a lot of kids look at this and go, Mr. Orris, if I do that, I end up with a negative, right? Because I get a negative down on the bottom. But you got to realize this side inside the parentheses, that's also negative. They cancel ends up being positive because they're all added together. It does work out the negatives and positive do work out appropriately. So that's what I looked at it and go, what? Okay. In this one you get 96.5156. Is that right? That's the right problem? Yeah, that's the right problem. I don't know what I mean. I feel like you have to see that. One minus. Pause. Okay, so yes. Thank you very much. Um, so once again, didn't have the recording going. N is six. 
a sub 1 is 400, r is 3 fourths. So the sum of the first six terms is 400 times 1 minus 3 fourths, parentheses around the 3 fourths to the 6th power, all over 1 minus 3 fourths. And this one is extremely nasty. Three three hundred and fifty four thousand nine hundred and twenty five all over two hundred and fifty six. If you're using one of my calculators and it's spitting out decimals instead of fractions, reset. Press the reset button on the back since you're the problem. On the back, there's a little there's a little thing that says reset. The little button there. You press it with you have to use a pen or a pencil to press it generally. Okay. Now okay, these next two are important for a couple of things that we need to do. They're slightly different. Still need the main four parts, though. How many terms are there? I go from one to four, so there are only four terms. So I do start at one. Four terms. What is my first term? Two. I have to put one in for n. Two times one gives me two. Two to the first power gives me two. Be careful because there's a difference between this formula and that formula. One is n, one is n minus one. Doesn't always give you the same thing. What is r? What am I raising to the power? Two. So r happens to be the same thing as my first term. Okay. So the sum of my first four terms is two times 1 minus 2 to the 4th divided by 1 minus 2. 2, 4, 8, 9, 16, let's see, 2, 30. Woo! What? Celebrate the little victories in life. Sure. Doing it in my head, adding up the first four numbers. But, okay, 1 minus 2 to the 4th. So you do 2 to the 4th and subtract that from what we have. Negative 15. Negative 15. Negative 15. Divided by 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. Okay. Next one. Okay. Next one. Same thing. N equals 6 because I go from 1 to 6. My first term. When you're doing it from the summation formula, to make sure you get the first term correct, Put 1 in for n and figure out what that first number should be. It's the best way to do it because this and this one can screw you up if you're not careful depending on what's going on. So if I put 1 in there, I get 2 times 3 to the 1 minus 1. Well, what's 1 minus 1? 0. What's 3 to the 0 power? It's 1. The only way to get zero is to multiply times zero, not raise to zero. Anything to the zero power is one. So my my first term is two in this case, which is it should be because it's n minus one. But if this was two times three to the nth power, my first term would not be two. My first term would be six. Very important. Whether this is n or n to the first can change your first term. That's why I say plug in one. 4n and figure it out just to make sure you get the right first term. Now r is always what's ever being raised to the power. 
always whatever's being raised to power. But whether that power is n or n minus 1, it doesn't matter. That's your r. But be careful on that first term because that can screw you up. So the sum of the first six terms is 2, 1 minus 3 to the 6th over 1 minus 3. And this is another one. If you look at it ahead of time, what is 1 minus 3? Negative 2. So this negative 2 and that positive 2, this and this cancel to make that negative 1. Do 1 minus 3 to the 6, and then change the sign. And that will give you your answer, and the answer in this case is 728. Once again, how you type it in the calculator and doing a little bit of work ahead of time might actually make it easier to do the problem. Your turn. Do those first four. Work on them. Okay. So first one, we know what n is. We know the first term. R is negative one fourth. That's what you multiply by, or take five divided by negative twenty, you get negative one fourth. So the sum of the first five terms, negative twenty times one minus negative one fourth to the fifth power divided by one minus negative one fourth, and you end up getting negative one thousand twenty-five over. 64. On the next one, n is 8, a sub 116, r is 2, that's not too bad. So the sum of the first 8 terms, 16 times 1 minus 2 to the 8th, all over 1 minus 2, and you get 4080. It's an easy one actually. This one here, you're given the three things, n, first term, and r. It's just plugging in into the formula. S sub n, 18 times 1 minus 1 half to the seventh power, all over 1 minus 1 half. And you end up getting uh, da -da -da -da. 1,143 over 32. Ladies. And then the last one on this section. Same thing. You're given N, first term, R. Some of the first six terms. 65,561 6, times 1 minus negative 3 to the 6th power divided by 1 minus negative 3. And you end up getting whew, negative 1 million 194,102. Six terms. And it's changing sign every other term. And we still got over a million. So yeah, it adds up. They grow very quickly when you're when you're growing geometrically. Okay. Same thing. Do those. Okay, just like the ones we did before. Once again, be very careful on the ones on the bottom. Figure out what the first term is by plugging in one for n first. Um, so this one you have to figure out R is two-thirds. Some of the first eight, ladies. One minus two-thirds to the eighth power over one minus two-thirds. And you get six, sorry, six, three, oh, five over two, forty-three. This one R is negative one half. Some of the first five terms, 
250 to 50 times 1 minus negative 1 half to the fifth power all over 1 minus negative 1 half and you end up getting 1375 over 8. These next two are the ones that are tricky. Uh, 10 is 6. R is 2. Plug in 1. You get A sub 1 is 6. Not 3. It looks like the formula we have. That it should be 3. But our power is not N minus 1. Our power is N. That's why I say plug in 1 to make sure you get the right, one, right number for it. So the sum of the first six terms, 6 times 1 minus 2 to the 6th power over 1 minus 2, and you get 378. And on this one, n is 5, r is 3, and an a sub 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, 3 to the 0 power is 1. So the sum of the first five terms is 1 times 1 minus 3 to the fifth power over 1 minus 3. And you get 121. Is there a way on your calculator to put in a decimal, like, converted to a fraction? Not that I'm aware of. We're only getting decimal answers. <laughs> These two should be whole numbers. No, no, yeah. I mean that about the first two. Um, if you understand what the bottom is, I don't know for sure, but I've written it out before. I'll watch for that on the answer key. Okay, we're almost out of time. I want to show how to do these last ones before we go, because I'm not going to finish this up tomorrow. So, put it in a summation notation. Here's what you need to do. You need to know for summation notation, you need to know the first term. You need to know what R is. R in this case is one half, and you need to know what n is. You need to know how many terms are in there. We did this part before, how to find n. 1 over 128 equals 8 times 1 half to the n minus 1 power. We did this before. Okay, to find out how many terms were in there when we were doing something else. Okay. You solve that, and you get n equals h n equals 11. And from there, it's actually very easy to do it in summation notation. Same thing. Plug in the first term, plug in r, plug in n at the top of your sigma. So it's the sum from n goes from 1 to 11 of my first term 8 times r to the n minus 1 power. Hardest part about that is figuring out what n is, but we did that before. Same thing on this. You set it up. 1 over 243 equals 1 times negative 1 third to the n minus 1, it's easy to find r on this. I have 1 as one number, the next number is my r. Is what do I multiply r? I multiply 1 times r. I get r. Okay. n equals 6 on this one. So I have the sum from n equals 1 to 6 of 1 times negative 1 third to the n minus 1. And if you don't put the 1 in front, that's OK. Questions? Your notes will have the rest of this finished out, so you can finish them up.